is up my ninjas I am strident and I'm back with a figure review it's been a while um, this time I'm reviewing the Arkham City Harley Quinn from uh, DC collectibles formerly DC direct for those of you who don't know um, today I was going through my videos on my you know home page and I saw one of uh, my homeboys um, Dar a dumbass reviewer he uh, reviewed Harley Quinn but he reviewed the uh, DC you know the arc of the geez Batman legacy version um, I wanted that version at first because you know me I'm a hardcore DC universe classics style figure uh, collector but I never saw it and then I got this about four months ago three months ago something like that and then after I got it I want to say like maybe a month or two ago I saw the you know the DC uh, the DC direct I mean the Jesus Batman legacy version and uh, I was just like man I already got this one um you know there I have some different opinions on this figure in comparison to the other one but some of the stuff that was said before you know especially what Dar was saying makes perfect sense so um you know props to him I'm gonna have actually a link to um Dar's uh, website or his uh you know YouTube page so you can check him out and uh dude's really cool we've been um homeboys for a minute um through through YouTube and the um the GI Joe uh community on uh, Facebook so um check him out and Dar, don't leave the G.I. Joe community, man. You can't leave. Oh, yeah. We're losing a lot of people in that community. It's kind of weird. But uh, anyway, back to the review. Um, I've had one Harley Quinn figure ever in history <laughs> besides this one, and it was the animated series Harley Quinn. Um, and I always wanted to get another one, you know, because she was the only, that was the only version of Harley that I ever had that matched the uh, the Joker that I had at the time. This one, on the other hand, is she doesn't really match the Joker that I have, but she this figure captures everything that was awesome about her design in Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, mostly Arkham City. Um, there's tons of details throughout this figure that eclipse the DC, uh, you know, the the Batman Legacy version. Um, she comes with her bat just like the other one. It's kind of strange. They come with the same uh, accessories. It's almost as if they just looked at each other's work and said, oh, we're going to do the same exact thing. But when you actually look at the figure, there are little standout details that make this figure uh, you know, stand apart from the other, in my opinion. Um, for one, I really dig all the detailing going throughout this costume. It's a lot more accurate to the game than the... Uh, Mattel release. Um, not to say that the Four Horsemen don't do a good job sculpting, but a lot of times, I guess, with constraints, they actually have to um, generalize. And, you know, whatever. It's the job. But, you know, we have a choice, which is cool. Um, I dig the way her boots have that, uh, the two different types of, or three, if you count the studs, the different types of uh, material feel or texture. Um, the paint is really nice. Um, I don't like the shape of her arms. She has weird kind of like bendy doll arms. Um, the Mattel one is a little better in that respect. But I dig the way that all her skin is a different plastic from the rest of her body. Or they painted the, you know, they, they, they put on the paint thick everywhere else to take away from, you know, or to, you know, make the, the clothing stand out against the skin which I love you know it makes her look kind of soft in the body and you know harsh in the, the suit um, the real chain on her belt that's awesome that's a detail that we don't you know it's not necessary but just to have it it sets off the figure you know whereas the Mattel one no the chain is plastic also the tattoos they're full color tattoos as opposed to the black and white tattoos on the uh, Mattel release this is one of those things, you know, if you collect um, DC Direct or DC, um, you know, collectibles or Marvel Select, you know that in, in uh, comparison to the cheaper versions of a lot of these figures, you're going to get more detail, less articulation, you know? So it's one of those things, it's a trade-off you know off the bat. But these tattoos are well done. I mean, you're seeing the difference in their process right here, you know? 
look at the detail. You can see that playing card, the generic playing card Joker face with the flower next to it and the other cards, and it's half of it's even covered up, and you still see it. Um, the biggest thing is something everyone who collects Marvel Select or DC collectibles, know, you know, um, the figure is out of scale with the other figures, you know? So if you collect DC Universe Classics, this is definitely out of scale with that. But it's kind of strange, though, because the Mattel version from Batman Legacy is taller than this one. So she'd be way out of scale, which is, I don't know, it's weird to me. Um... But, you know, I figure since both companies know that they're making the same figure, which fits in with a specific line, they should be in scale. But, you know, I didn't hear any reviewers point that out, that the, uh, you know, Marvel or DC, um, you know, collectibles version is shorter than the Mattel version. Um, I would have thought that the Mattel version would have been, you know, smaller than this because usually that's the case i mean look at this joker this is the original dc superheroes joker but either way she fits in it makes it look like joker got really lucky and he got himself a whole lot of woman or he's just not that big of a dude and since she's wearing heels it kind of you know it doesn't look so bad um i really dig like i said the paint everything looks on point sculpting I have to take points away for the uh, arms and the fact that her, she has no expression. She just looks like a doll, like a porcelain doll. And, you know, I would have liked her to have some kind of, you know, a smirk or something, kind of like the way the Mattel version has. So, you know, I'm still thinking about at some point picking up the Mattel version if I ever see it. Um, if I never see it in the store, <laughs> which I've yet to see it since that you know, last time, a couple months ago, um, if I never see it again, you know, whatever, I have a Harley Quinn, it's cool, um, I would give her, like, a 7.5 out of 10, um, she fits in well with the other Arkham stuff, she fits in well with your other DC, you know, whatever, um, she doesn't look too off, even though the designs in Arkham, the Arkham games in general, kind of fit more in the Spawn kind of McFarlane-esque kind of, you know, world, but, you know, if the villains look like this and Batman looks like your typical, um, you know, DCUC, then, you know, it's not it's not a huge deal. As long as you got a cloth cape on your Batman, you're good. So anyway, I'm Strident. It's my story and I'm sticking to it. And uh, I will be back with another review. All right, guys. Peace outside. <laughs>